Hello YouTube friends, welcome to the Red Parrot channel. I am your host, Mary Ellen. This is an episode of At K3N Cloth Tales Weekly Slow Slit Slow Stitch 2024 Week 3 Startup. I think I am falling into a rhythm of doing uh, whatever I can do to set up and then work on it through the week and then sort of do an ending. So I do sort of a sort of ish two videos a week. Uh, so first thing, nothing at all to do with fabric. I should keep track of what we're doing. And that there's no better reason to make a zine than keeping track of something or zine-ish. Will that work? Or I could just shoot, use a sheet of paper, whatever. Uh, so week one, can't remember, week two, can't remember, week three, no, this was balance. Uh, this was community. Uh, now what's this week? Diversity. Okay, there we are. I feel much better now that we've got a, a written record. Okay, that out of the way. That, I'm gonna have to put that somewhere safe. Uh, wish me luck. Um, okay, so diversity, uh, the way Catherine interpreted that was four different stitch, uh, I don't wanna say styles, uh, there's a word for it. So she used uh, quilting, uh, she used borrow, she used uh, wool mending, and she used uh, the Indian uh, method of uh, sari stitching. Um, it's not chindi. Uh, it'll come to me. Anyways, and then she was talking about uh, families and uh, talking about putting your own family stitch traditions in them. And I think the diversity then will come from everybody's own traditions compared to each other. And then you have a diverse um, world of, of stitching. So let us start with so I did some ironing before I started this. So I just get triple bonus points for that. Just saying. So this is my base. And I think this is about six and a half by six and a half. Always give myself, yep, six and a half, six and a half. Give myself a little scoot room. So there are four people that I can think of in my family that are stitchers, that are fabric, textile, sewer maker people uh, there is my mum there is my mum's oldest sister who was a mother figure to my mum aunt mary there was my nana on my dad's side and there's me who is sort of rounding everything out so I tried to find, I've been scrambling around the house looking for things that can represent all four of us in sort of the, the four different ways. And uh, I came up with things. So let us start with Aunt Mary because Aunt Mary is probably the, I don't want to say the easiest, possibly the most. She had the uh, sewing tradition, I think, that is... Uh, classic classical she's a quilter she was a so my mom and dad my mom and dad my mom aunt mary the whole clan grew up on a farm and they my mom was born a million years ago when farming had a whole bunch of 
not just fun traditions, but traditions that made their life work. So Aunt Mary was the oldest daughter and she could, she quilt like a demon and she also could make things. So my mom would often say, hey, could you make me an apron? And then, you know, like two weeks later, a bundle would arrive at the door through the mail. And that was, you know, a couple aprons that Aunt Mary made. Like Aunt Mary could make things with nominal measurements. And I still have some of those aprons, but we are not cutting any of that up for this. So my biggest memory of, and I do have some of Aunt Mary's quilts somewhere. Uh, I'm not cutting those up either. Uh, but she had a color palette and she had a bright color palette. It was always um, like, if she had like pretty fabric, it was always balanced by like plain yellows, plain light pinks, it was bright. And I really appreciate that aesthetic. So I tried to get some pieces that were kind of bright. So this is the same thing. Um, bright and kind of cohesive-y. So we need to do some math. So I wanna do, so six by six, I'm gonna write this down. Use just a little piece. So we need six by six. So each one of those is three by three. If we wanted to do that, so to get that to be three, we need an inch and a half, which means, so two inch squares. So I need four two inch squares. That was a lot of math, just all at once. So this is not gonna fit, which is sad, but probably just for the best, because there's a lot of uh, pressing out that happened there. Okay, 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 okay. So it might be one, two, three. One, two, well, hang on. Does this, do we have a two by two here? Oh, we do. Okay, so, um, what do I wanna do? I don't need to be precise, but I'm kinda going to be anyways. There's one, and I have the, the high test scissors out, and I just unthreaded something. It was probably important. Oh, love the sound of sharp scissors on fabric. So there's one. Put that aside. Uh, let's do this one next. So this one's got a salvage that's right there. Which is the better... The less, less waste. Yeah, yeah, here. Just didn't come out right. Okay, get rid of that one. And this one for sure doesn't have uh, a two inch square in it. It's pretty color. Not for this application. Now then, where are we at here?
So that's two. Um, I want one of them kind of pinkish. So I want that little bit. I think, I don't know why I do, but I think this might be, um, K facet. I always attribute, uh, bright, um, I don't want to say oversized, but oversized flowers to him. And then I don't need that one. Then I could sort of do this, the red or the yellow. See where the yellow fits. It's a bit there. Yeah, let's do the red. This for sure is from a thrifted garment. So there we are. So that's Aunt Mary. And I'm not gonna sew this uh, here, but we can sort of do that. There we are, and that'll be Aunt Mary. Okay, 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 okay. Now let's do Nana. Now Nana was a seamstress and uh, she was, Uh, it came to my attention because I started to do math and think about it. So you don't think about things when you're a kid. And then when you're an adult or an older adult, you think, oh, I should have asked her a whole bunch of questions while she was alive because I have questions now. She was not only a Victorian, but she was also an Edwardian. Or she was an Edwardian, but also a Victorian. And I have her sewing basket, which is amazing. And that is the only textiles I think that I have of hers. I have a button box of hers, but I don't, oh, I do. Full stop. Oh, yeah. So she, Nana was a seamstress. She could make anything. So she was, she made dresses and, um, you know, curtains, like all of the things, both Aunt Mary and Nana had the sewing skill because it was a functional requirement of living in the time. So it wasn't a pastime like it might be more so today that I will do something, you know, pretty or whatever. They needed the skill to be able to live. Nana made I think her living in part by being a seamstress. 
Um, and so the thing that I recall seeing, and it's around somewhere, I'll have to go find it. She had made a whole bunch of rag rugs and they are very large, very heavy, and they're made out of uh, little pieces of wool fabric about this big, cut into sort of like a, um, a petal shape, and then stuck into burlap, and then pulled up like that. So I bet I can find, and um, it kind of sheds from time to time, so I will not be uh, destroying anything that is uh, highly useful um, but we've got this and this is another thing out of her sewing basket which is very 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 old lace and so the other oh it's one piece I thought it was two never mind I feel like I should just do some wrapping here so that it's Get some of those folds out of its system and then you know possibly doing something like that so I'm gonna go with that as an idea and I'm going to <gasps> cut there and I cut more than I need I know I know I know I know I know quiet It'll be fine. I want more so that I have it already cut if I when I use this extra piece. It'll be fine. So this brings us to my mom who was uh oh crap, we haven't done finished with Nanny yet. Uh, this envelope also in her um, sewing uh, basket and there are ribbons here and these are very 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 interesting colors because they are um, suffragette colors this is it's this is actually a pale blue but you could call it a white but the purple and the green that's suffragette colors and I like that as an idea to put on here because my Aunt Mary, my Nana, and my mom were really, really strong, fabulous women. My mom is my hero. She still is, even though she's passed away. I loved her and I do love her so much. She was such a great human being and I miss her every single day and so uh, without getting too maudlin one of the things that I found is she was there is a partially made tablecloth that is honking huge but unfinished I am almost certainly never going to finish she knit, she crocheted, she sewed, she embroidered, uh, she did macrame, she did uh, upholstery. Um, what else did she do? Oh yeah, Nan also made rug rugs, like, you know, those hooky rugs? She also did those, speaking of all the things. Um, yeah, my, and so I learned most of my early textile skills from my mom. So when she was sewing something, I would get the scraps and I would be able to make something. Um, she taught me, how, like, she taught me everything. You know, just, that's just touch of the cheek. She taught me everything. This I think is also from my mom. Like she would have these little bits and because of the time and place that she um, grew up, both, all three of these women went through the depression and the depression, World War, she went through World War I. They all went through World War II. My mom served in World War II. Uh, 
Um, I don't know that there are any other sort of large events of the world that sort of top those, but, mm. and so the World War II and the Depression left everybody with a sensibility. And so this is just something that my mom, like my mom was always keeping string, like, you know, the potato, potatoes and you pull out the string of the potatoes, wrap them all up, tuck them away because, uh, the sensibility of keeping all of the things in case you needed it, extremely important. Um, so she had done, so I had taken two of these and because I am who I am, I decided that I would dye them just to see how the cotton would take. And it takes beautifully. This is probably, mm, I don't know, buckthorn maybe. So this, she has a huge bag of these and every single one of them is this with this kind of um, wrapping as pristine as that and then stacked upon the next one and then curled up. I ruined this in the, um, the dyeing process. It came like that. Like you can see the sort of the preserved bit like that stacks and stacks and stacks of them. So I think what we want to do is maybe use one and that and maybe have some kind of, could do maybe three. Actually what I want is a piece of her knitting or knit something because she was a power knitter, a functional power knitter. Um, and also a huge scrappy Everybody was scrappy. And I think the scrappy came from the depression and the war where you didn't have enough stuff. And so I am so aware that junk journaling vibrates in a frequency in my body that I get because I grew up surrounded by this scrappiness and this being not something new, but uh, something that is that was fundamental to the to the house if that makes any sense um, so one of the things this is a thread I am going to I need an orc jar on this table I have two I need a third because who doesn't need three orc jars um, what am I looking for? Looking for the other bit of that. Here we are. Two other bits. Three other bits. So this is pajama pieces. So my mom, I ended up taking care of her um, after my dad passed away and at the end of her life, last sort of five, seven years, she had cancer and she had dementia. And I'm here to tell you, cancer is easy, dementia is hard. Anyways, I was the primary caretaker. And one of the things that was really important was pajamas. It got to the point where she just wanted to be comfortable. And I couldn't find pajamas that fit her and that were of a basic style. And she had a favorite pair of pajamas that was absolutely threadbare. I am, uh, I am my mother's daughter. I am my aunt's niece and I am my grandmother's granddaughter. And I happen to know how to draft patterns from a pre-existing garment. So I took her favorite pajamas and I made one, two, about four, four or five pairs of pajamas that were all identical so that um, we could have more than one pair of pajamas and we could sort of retire the threadbare ones and actually have her dressed in something warm. And so these are two of the pieces. I have more and maybe that should be the background for my mom. So I think I'll do that. And then me, so 
this is bananas. Um, it's the only thing I could find. I'm such a moron. So this needs to be trimmed down just a hair because suddenly I had these beautiful stories and then suddenly I had this huge honk and M. Um, but it should sort of fit like that. I'm hoping if I do that and then M, M is me, me. So, uh, this was Aunt Mary. My mom's first name was Mary, but because Aunt Mary had the Mary, my mom went by her second name. <clears throat> um, my Nana wasn't an M at all, but, um, we'll call M for marvelous. And so this is actually going to be pink and this is um a cellulose it's a dissolvable and i wanted to create a monogram for a completely different project it has nothing to do with this project at all um, but this is sort of based around um i did the monogram and i either will fill it in or i will do some beading but i think that's what the project is going to look like um so a lot of this is just going to be sewing bits down. The, and maybe what I do is I do a little quilt square here as well. There is a crazy quilt that we have, we, I, have in the house that's from like 18 bananas years. Like, I don't know, 1873 or something. And it is a crazy quilt. And it's beautiful. And maybe mums should be like a crazy quilt. And then I will put this sort of on top like that. And that will be my textile traditions of uh, my family. I don't think they are quite what the brief is looking for but this will make me immensely happy and I will have a square that I can talk about that relates to the fiber traditions of my family. So I think that is all for now. That's my introduction, my setup for the week. I am off to find some more flannel because I think I have some downstairs and I'm also, also off to find out, see if I still have those rag rugs and maybe find a snip. So that's all for now. I hope you were uh, entertained by my stories of my, my super fiber family. And we will see you in a couple of days. Thanks so much. Always appreciate having someone to talk to. Bye now.